I'm so excited that we have Innovate Digital Solutions as a sponsor of HeCast this season. Innovate Digital Solutions provides anything that an office might need, hardware, software, IT, copy machines, things like that. They make an office run more smooth and they're really good at it. But one of the things that I love about Innovate, their founders, Andre and Katia Brasso, they're people that don't just believe it's important to build a strong business, but also to take that success and build the strong community around them. They really have a heart for what He Changed It is doing. People they love have gone through some of the stuff that we talk about on this show. Andre and Katia both believe that you can build a life worth living, and there are these evidence-based solutions that can help build that life. We're so excited to be in partnership with Innovate Digital Solutions, and He Changed It is better for it, and we hope you will be too. Go to innovate.ca and check them out. Welcome to HeCast, the official podcast of He Changed It. As always, I am Mike Chisholm. As always, I am so excited to be here to talk to interesting people about uh, the world of, of mental health and where we're at and where we're going and all of that fun stuff. We're at a very cool place in the life cycle of HeCast because now we are gathering uh, so many of the people in our first hundred and some odd episodes. It was like, hey, will you come back? Will you please come back? Will you please come back? We'd love to have you back. Finally. We are starting to do that. We're starting to have some of our previous guests come back and give us updates and catch up a little bit. Earl Pereira has been on our show. Please go back and not now, obviously, uh, you know, go back after you finish this episode. Go back and watch Earl's episode uh, that he uh, shot with us a couple of years back. Former member of Wide Mouth Mason. Now the steadies is his steady. And we're just really, really excited to catch up a little bit. I've watched him perform in that time and just uh, really, really grateful that Thank you for coming back on HeCast, so man. So great to be back. Appreciate Finally. You. Yeah. We never gave up. We knew it was going to happen. Yeah, it almost Took did. a couple it, years. It almost did once and then uh, didn't end up. But no, I'm, I'm really, really grateful that you're back here. And, and thank you very much for taking time. Because um, when you guys are Absolutely. touring, touring now is it's a little tough. bit. It's it, well, tough. It's tough. It's, you just don't have enough time. Yeah. So that's why it was perfect for me, knowing I was going to be here for a few extra days. Yeah. Like the first thing I wanted to do was come and talk to you guys. Uh, so yeah, well, this is, here we are. We appreciate but, it. So thank you for having me back. No, 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 no. I really appreciate being here. Thanks, Earl. Um, this is great. Uh, I guess for First thing we're going to lead off with, because sure. I know the answer, mm-hmm. um, how, how are things going with the steadies? You know, better than ever. I think I think we've been um, building it for so many years. And, and I always hear the stories of like, you know, bands I look up to, like um, you can name any band, but let's say a band, let's say like No Doubt off the top of my head, because yeah. I heard the story recently. You know, it's, it, it, sometimes it takes being together for 10, 12 years before things finally, finally start taking off. And, mm-hmm. and I think um, I'm seeing that right now with with our band and it's getting pretty exciting because things that have always wanted to happen for us are starting to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think us being active during uh, the pandemic, all the work we've done leading up to that as well. I mean, we started the band and I started the band in 2011, mm-hmm. halfway through 2011. So it's been going. And it's been hasn't been easy, but uh, you know we didn't we didn't quit during the pandemic. We just we just kept pushing, and I mean that's when I came here, right? Yep. We were on tour. Yep. One of the few bands that were still trying to tour during those times. I remember we got even featured on Canadian Musician Magazine as the only band on tour right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're exaggerating a little bit, but they weren't that far off. There no. wasn't many of us willing to do it. And I think that's, it's really paying off for us now because the momentum just kept on rolling and, uh, and, and I think it just showed people and ourselves too, and fans and, and music promoters and anyone in the industry that, that we love doing this. Mm -hmm. And this is, um, we're a band that you can count on, you know, and we're going to show up. Uh, not just show up, but, but you're also going to bring it. I mean, I, I, you know, my wife and I talked about this after we, after we saw you, um, live the, the experience of seeing the steadies live, it is a fantastic experience. That is you guys, I don't know how you're able to do it, but you create energy. I don't know if it's the, it's, if it's the reggae kind of fusion, uh, style that you have, but you are able to create, create energy and you literally give it to people. It's contagious. People want to get up out of their seats. They want to come out and they want to start dancing and grooving to your music. Mm-hmm. Um, such a positive, happy vibe. 
in a time, I think that we need more of that. I, I honestly think like I love seeing an act um, and actually feeling more energized after I see them. And, and you guys certainly fit that bill. Is that something when you're writing music that you try and build into um, into songs or is that just naturally there because of the chemistry that you have? It, a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. uh, and and the, the third thing would probably just be my natural personality. Yeah. Like I'm I'm a, a pretty positive person. Yeah. I like having fun. I like when I, when people are having a good time. So you know, I'm a good host, yeah. you know, of my house even, right? I want to make sure it's, it's, it's probably like, like the Filipino background <laughs> in me, you know, we're always trying to please everybody and yeah. make sure everyone's fed and this and that. I have to I take that vibe and into my music and, you know, it's just, I love bringing people together. I love uh, raising people up. I love um, like people leaving energized and feeling good and it's, and it just so happened, I think it stuck out more during the pandemic because people did need that. And bands like us, our music in, in particular, and our vibe was just what everyone wanted. Yeah. And everyone wanted and needed. Uh, we needed it too. But um, I think it's just it's just that kind of give and take relationship and, and with a crowd, you know, it's that energy transfer. And, and I just felt even, even um, our show here in town that we here to play, it just felt like everyone was connected yep. together. And th that's my favorite shows because it gets, it gets pretty magical, you know, to be honest. And, and that's something you just can't replicate um, in any other form of, platform you know no. it's just like that's why people go to live shows absolutely right you can't just you can't just watch that on tv and get that same experience it's like you got to be there absolutely now that being said you also you also feel it uh when you listen to your over the over the digital airways when you listen to your stuff where's the best place to find you and what's the latest release and all that let's plug let's do a little plugging here first and oh then I sure go to the next uh one. the best places to find us are probably on our on our social media platforms yep our facebook and instagram are usually kind of the hot spots and that's just the steady TikTok is starting to grow a little bit yeah. but we need to do a little little more work on that um trying to grow our our, our TikTok and youtube i think those are so key in today's uh modern you know yeah social settings and um our websites the studies.ca uh websites are tough though they're so hard to maintain yeah you know, it's just like because you, you put so much attention on your social media your website kind of gets yeah gets it goes left, into the background gets yeah. left out it's like hey remember me i'm the one i should be the, the place everyone goes to <laughs> so we're trying to be more conscious about that and driving people to that to the site and so we put out a live uh uh concert um recording from the summer yep. um it was a nest creek festival and and people can download it free and all they have to do is you know, sign up to our mailing list, which is kind of nice because then yeah. they get a bunch of new followers and they're like, oh yeah, I'll get this new record. All you get is give them an email, done. So it's like, it working, it's working. Yeah, well, and then people will know when you're coming to town. Yeah. Like that's what you, that's that's what you want when you're a music fan. I, I There's no worse feeling um, than, than when an act that you love has come through your neck of the woods and you find out about it after the fact. Yeah, that's not fun. That's not fun uh, at all. That happens to me sometimes too. And it's just like, ah, <laughs> oh, I can't believe I didn't know that was happening. So yeah, there's there's those things. Um, Spotify, Apple Music, all the, the regular. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, when you release music now digitally, if you can, anything that you listen to, you know, Deezer or Tidal yep. or anything, it's, it's, it'll, it'll be on all of them. Yep. So Google Play. Yeah. So you're you're available now. Um, this is a great segue because I want to talk about the grind that you're in right now. You know, you started it in 2011. Um, after after that previous chapter kind of finished, um, but the original grind that you were in with Wide Mouth. Yeah. Um, and 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 watching what you did back then, we were talking just before the cameras turn on. We we're talking about music videos and, and and growing up, it was MTV or Much Music or whatever, and, and that culture that was there, mm -hmm. uh, that was the goal. The goalposts have moved now. Um, you were so young when you guys were doing that original grind to get to kind of the, the that chapter and where that chapter went. How is the grind now compared to the grind then? Are there a lot of similarities, or a lot? Are there is it is it a completely different game? I I would say it's a completely different game. Yep. Uh, there the only similarities really is that you still need to be really, really good to be 
on top, <laughs> yeah. right? When it's when it comes down to it, that's that's really what it is. It's just now there's a platform for the, a, a little more level playing field. You know, anyone can start up a Spotify artist yep. account. Yep. Anyone can load up their music on there. Anyone can you know, self promote and do all those things to get be known. Yep. And you can just do it by sitting in your basement, being at home and be a star, you know? Yep. And you're either a YouTube star or a Spotify star, or whatever it is. Um, so that wasn't available back then. It wasn't available back then. It was like, you know, much music was the cream of the crop to, to be, you know, that fortunate to perform at the much music studios was like the Mecca of, mm -hmm. of Canadian music. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you did that, you made it. Yep. Right. I remember feeling that the first time we played in, in one of those, um, in the much music studio and, you know, all this, all the high school kids are looking, watching through the glass yep. and they got their school bags and, I'm like, oh my God, I was you guys. Yeah. And now I'm in here. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when I'm like, yeah, this is it. We did it. We, we were doing it. Yeah. Made it. And, uh, and it's, it's harder to feel that way now. Uh, so I think the only thing you can really compare is if you maybe get on, um, like satellite radio or something like that. Yeah. Cause that, that to me, there's the new Mecca of the industry right now. Uh, more so than just any other radio format. Right. Because satellite is so mysterious. Yeah. It's so like, you know, there's no email, there's no phone number. Nope. Like you either know somebody there or you don't, you know, and, and only the, only the pe the artists that are deserving of being on there are on it. Yeah. Right. So luckily we're about to be on it. I know we were talking about that. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if mm -hmm. you were going to go into it on so, camera yeah, or not. Know, so we, yeah. So we, we released uh, some music in the past year, but we didn't really release things in a, in a, um, a really um, formal way where we had, you know, people working for us that were yep. working hard and promoting it. We just, do what everyone else is doing. You just put it out on your yep. social media and, and on your streaming platforms. You're like, Hey, we got a song out. But now with the, you know, we're working with people in the U S um, companies that get your music onto, onto the radio mm -hmm. and especially that radio. And so, yeah, our song Philophobia just is, um, it got serviced yesterday. So it's going to be, yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting to be finally, doing all that stuff. And then we'll, and we'll follow up with touring. And I think that's where the similarities come in where the bands and artists that get, are going to be given these opportunities mm -hmm. are ones that um, the people that are giving you the opportunities know that you're an actual working artist. Yep. You're not just doing this in your room and you're never going to ever play a show. Ever, yeah. You know, yeah. cause there's a lot of those artists. Absolutely. Too, right? Yeah. Uh, so and we're like, nope, we're there. We're a legit working band and they can count on us that if we're going to be played at some college in California, that they're probably going to meet us by the end of this year. Yep. You know, we'll, we'll be there shaking their hand and, and, um, rocking a show that's um and, and that's a very very good point because i mean there's so many aspects to uh to a working band and i mean sometimes like if you could be a you can uber produce a phenomenal song in your basement that kind of a thing that does mm -hmm. not mean you can go out and perform it and translate it and that's the one thing i love about your music um many times i love a band when the live experience is actually even better you crave the live experience and when you listen to the studio stuff it brings you back to the live experience mm -hmm. and, and, and um, you guys certainly, certainly fit that bill and more. Um, I Defin cannot. Definitely. We, we are that way. Wide Mouth was like that way too. Very much. Yeah, yes. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Yeah, we're your live band, but I think that's the best combination to be um, for success in this industry is just to, um, to be as, you know, a live band that um, people really want to come see. Yep. Um, you've got that down but then you also have got there's sometimes there's really great live bands um for example the 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 the, the person we're working with in the u.s he's in california and mm -hmm. he's telling us he's like there's a lot of bands like you guys there that have a similar fusion of sounds yeah but none of them have songs that can be on the radio like you guys do they don't oh, have songs that a lot of people are have the potential to to be heard and loved by many. Yep. Right. And that, I think that's a big difference. If you kind of have both of those things, then, uh, 
you know, you can you can end up being like the police or something like that, yeah. where where they were the to me they were the my favorite band. Yep. They were the epitome of the greatest live performing yep. band musicality wise. Yep. And then they had the hits to back it up too. But you know, that's just that's what you strive for. You know, no one's ever going to be them again. No, no, absolutely. But but, but it's yeah, but it's a, it's a hell great, of a hell of a goal. Hell it's of a, a hell of a heck of a goal. Yep. And that's always been up always in the in the back of my mind to just try to achieve that. Um, going back to, uh, you know, then versus now your early twenties, you're going through this, you're trying, you know, going CD club to CD club, trying to figure out, finding your voice, finding all these things. You get your little inches of success, you know, and it starts to go, it starts to pop. Um, safe to say uh, many of us, uh, of us guys, when we're in our twenties, we feel invulnerable. We feel like, yeah, no, this is all, or, or we, or we're blissfully naive or ignorant. It's like, you know mm-hmm. what? Yeah. If it, I'm not thinking about tomorrow at all. Um, now, but when we, as, as most guys know, when they get into their, their, their forties and fifties and whatnot, they got a little bit of uh, wisdom behind them, a little bit of experience. I'm just curious, uh, building it now compared to building it then, mm-hmm. um, you know, going and we throw mental health into it, all of that stuff. Um, is it, does it get more anxiety ridden that, that sort of thing now? Is it harder that way mentally? Is there a, is there a difference uh, between the two time frames? Definitely. Yeah. Huge difference. Just, you know, the maturity level you're at when you're in your twenties, even, even for myself going through the golden era of, of Canadian music, Absolutely. which I feel like the luckiest guy, the luckiest artist in, in Canada. Some days I just yep. feel like, I got to experience that whole thing and be and right so there. Young. <laughs> yeah, be right there with everybody. Yeah, like all my whole my all my twenties basically, right? And uh it's it's it was tough because we it, it was also the golden era I was also led to the the beginning of the end yeah. of the music industry. As yeah, you were there when Napster and all that stuff yeah. showed up and changed the entire industry. You that was right during your kind of your heyday. That was in I was in the you know, my mid twenties yep. to late twenties when that happened. Yep. So, uh, to, to have go from such a high, um, uh, you know, doing all the things we got to do and, you know, the big shiny tunes and the edge fest tours and, <laughs> and then bands like Rolling Stones and things like that, all those amazing, huge things I got to do much music, mm-hmm. um, and then to have it all taken away from you just like, like that was, um, yeah, I mean that 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 sends that would send anybody into a bit of a depression. So, and me being not a very um, negative person at all, I've always I've always been able to, you know, stay positive through through everything. I had a hard time staying positive during those days. Yeah, like it it affected me quite a bit. Where, uh, you know, almost just quit playing mm-hmm. music because, but it's just that's that's what happens to you. You know, just you get so dejected from it you know where you know you had people that were all telling you how much they loved you and how great you are mm-hmm. and um and then you know getting dropped from the label that, that was supposed to love you and yep. be your champion all those years um because you didn't sell enough mm-hmm. your sales didn't hit a certain mark uh tough on someone in their 20s um so you know i, I think to be able to get through that and uh, come out on the other side was just uh, a testament to, um, I, th- I think, just the work that we had put in to get to that point. Mm-hmm. You know, we, I felt like in my, even before anyone knew who what Wide Mouth was or any, in me or anything, uh, we were slugging it out, playing some pretty nasty places, yep. going through some pretty hard things. I think we touched them on on this a little bit last time I was here, but yep. you know, a lot of racism yep. um, and uh, hostile territories and uh, really bad situations, you know, fearing for your life type situations. And, uh, and I think that kind of prepared us to handle or prepared me to be, at least be able to handle when that happened in the music industry, because yeah, that was as tough that was. It wasn't threatening to my life, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't scared. perspective. Yeah. Yep. So I could always hang on my, my hang my hat on that, and knowing that hey, it's it could be worse. Mm-hmm. And I got I just told myself this could be worse. You're still 
a musician that gets to have a career in music. You just need to find another way to, if this is what you want to do for the rest of your career. You're going to have to figure out something out um, to get there. And, and to me, figuring that out was starting my own band and yeah. creating my own music and starting from scratch. Yeah. And reinventing myself in a way. Right. So easier yeah. said than done. Yes. Yeah. Easier said than done. Like, like that's not the, that's not the easiest thing in the world. It's not. Do. No, I'm, I'm not being older in my forties and um, looking back on all that and dealing with different things though. You know, it's, it's, it's funny. I kind of laugh at the things that used to bother me back then. Yeah. Cause if anything, it was the opposite of what you were saying when I was in my twenties, I was always looking ahead at like, why aren't we doing this? Uh, we should be touring Europe. We should be, you know, there was always more and more and more you need. We yep. achieve this, but there's still so much more to do, you guys. You know, yeah. that's kind of how I was thinking. Whereas me now, it's a, I still have that. I still want to achieve things and do I have lots of drive. Don't get me wrong. It's just that now I just appreciate like the ride. Yeah, like I'm enjoying this. Even even the small things of knowing that that we're we're gonna be on you know radio in the U.S. and and we're gonna start making some inroads down there is like that gets me excited and just enjoy it. Yeah, you know everyone's uh, it's it's almost like um, if you compare it to sports because I'm a huge I'm a huge sports absolutely guy. yeah I know yeah I'm a team <laughs> sports guy of anything right it's very similar you know to building a team from the ground up yeah into like a championship team, you know, where you, you were, you weren't even in the, in the big leagues yet. Mm -hmm. And then to go from amateur to pro. And then once you're in pro, it's like, okay, we're at the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. How do we, how do we win a championship? Yep. Right. And then, so where I'm at now is like, about halfway through that we're building our, our way up to the equivalent of winning a championship. It's, yep. it's just that now I'm like, just, really enjoying everything nothing really bothers me anymore about anything like that you're a really present guy i noticed that the first time that, that we met as well i noticed that when you're on stage you're extremely present like you're in that moment like even like right now like here like like greeting you outside again like i just noticed that about you um you're extremely present and i think that uh that's a gifting um or a skill that 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 would serve a lot of folks. I mean, a lot of folks, they live in the future and that guy can create anxiety, you know, at extreme levels. They live yep. in the past that can, that can create depression. Um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, in, 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 in extreme cases, uh, being present is one of the ways to kind of really, really, we don't know what's around the corner anyway. Right. And it's hard to telegraph it, predict it. We can work our butt off. So it's a better future, but we don't know what's going to happen. And being present is one of those things that really is a silver bullet. And it's, it's not, uh, um, so much, it can look like a skill, but it really just comes down to like going through things, having experienced um, um, a lot mm -hmm. in, in, in your life. And the older we get, mm -hmm. I think the, the most we're going to really experience is loss, right? Yeah. We're going to lose people the yeah. older we get. It keeps happening. Uh, people close to you. And um, yeah, you just lost your dad, I think, uh, the last time you yeah, were here. Yeah, I lost my dad just before we did the dad. last one, and and that was a that was massive for me, right? And uh, I just posted actually about um, something I never really talked about to anyone except my siblings um, and maybe one of my best friends, uh, and that I'm finally kind of at peace about because his the anniversary of his passing um, was just a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. and um, passed away four years ago. But uh, I was actually the the one that actually was responsible for trying to save his life. Like I, my mom called me in the middle of the night. I had just gotten home from a long road trip, and um, yeah, something was wrong. Yeah, she was like, "He's on the ground," and I got there, and yeah, and I told this story, and and I didn't, I never really had taken CPR. I never had any training. You know, I wish I had. Um, so. The person on the phone, 911 operator, was walking me through it all until the paramedics showed up. So she, I was basically trying to save my dad's life. And yeah, could you never forget that? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so that was that was tough to deal with. But, you know, I've, I've come on the other side of that and to the point where now where I can share that story and and people um, 
friends are there's a lot of support for that and and I, I did deal with it too with therapy you know just mm -hmm. during COVID it had to be like phone call therapy because you yep. couldn't, couldn't go to the offices right so it was like talking on the phone to the to the therapist and uh did you find therapy helped very much but what, what yeah, was it about therapy much. that uh because again uh, you mm -hmm. know we're much of our audience are are, are, are guys that nece haven't necessarily been through it because of the stigmas that come with it right and, and to hear yeah. someone like yourself talk about that and how it does help what yeah. was it what was it about it that uh that helped you well um for the the main thing was that my therapist was good at explaining to me that I have PST, P, PTSD, PTSD mm -hmm. yeah, which I didn't realize was what I was actually experiencing, right? Yeah. I didn't know it's not something you can just read about and, and, and understand. So for her to be able to explain it to me and always be reiterating every session that this is why you're feeling this way, it's a not normal feeling that you're going through and mm -hmm. it's because of the shock and everything that you had to go through um so that was really helpful to know that it's like you know you you beat, you beat yourself up over it thinking that it should have been able to save them you know but um she explained it to me that it's like no it's like the fact that you were there trying mm -hmm. and you didn't um she said a lot of people would have even you know, been in shock themselves and not, froze up. and not have been able to do yep. anything. And you actually just were calm and did everything. She's like that, that was, you know, if your dad could be here to tell you that he would say he would have been proud. Yeah. Saying things like that to me, it was, was like, okay, I could, you know, hearing that more and more makes you feel like you can start feeling a little bit better about it as time goes on, you know? Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about creativity and the and creative people and, 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 and how you can take, can you take a moment like that and turn it into a song with the type of music that you guys make with the oh, type of like, like, I mean, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And have, sure. you, have, I, you, have I, you, yeah, exactly. That's a lot of the, a lot of those experiences um, are, are in, the, in a lot of the new music and uh, for sure. I mean, uh, there's a song we um, released this last year that was going to get re-released again, mm -hmm. um, but it's called Champion. And that that has to do with, I mean, I wrote that with with my bandmate that I started a band with. Mm -hmm. He passed away in 2017. Yeah. Um, pretty much a similar way my dad did. They both had an brain aneurysms. But um, yeah, that's that was something important. Um, people can feel the emotion in that song because... You know, his guitar work is still on the track, like because we wrote it, <laughs> we recorded it before he before yeah. he died, and Absolutely. and uh, oh, that the yeah, for sure, and you can feel it, right? immortality, totally, right there, totally. <laughs> and uh, you know, when things look lost. My dad, there's a song we wrote called "Summer Never Says Goodbye," and that that's uh, that one's about my dad, and um, how basically, at least at least where I'm from, yeah, uh, summer. It, it, that that was kind of the metaphor how people when people leave you they can be gone and you won't get you won't get a goodbye you know like it's usually like all of a sudden summer turns to fall in one day and you're just like where did it go yep you know so that's uh that was very definitely um something that it was a tribute to my dad and uh and that's what i mean you know like i wasn't always present so the loss is kind of what makes you appreciate every moment because like I'm not getting any younger either, right? No. Like none of us are. So you just got to live life and appreciate it. could be taken away from you at any given time. Yep. So just got to, um, you know, live your life for yourself and for the people that you've lost too because they're not here anymore. So, you know, they're sort of living vicariously through a, through you now. Absolutely. Well, yeah. I feel right. Yeah. I feel when I accomplish something that juice is like, is, is cheering in the background. My yep. dad is, you know, high-fiving being like, yes, you guys are doing it, you know? So you don't do it just, just for yourself. Um, really when it comes to relationships, um, I was married mm -hmm. for, uh, 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, we remain best friends. Um, and it was, it was, a, it's still sad. It was very sad. One of the hardest things I had to do was, was let go of, of that relationship. And we just turned it into something else. We didn't, it didn't end. It just morphed it into something new. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, 
So a new song that um, we haven't released yet. It's called Let Go. Mm. Definitely touches upon that. And hopefully, and it's just more about that um, sometimes, you know, having having at least f- had the feeling of someone that really loved you and you really loved is is just as special as like you can't I can never be taken away from you no you'll always you have that experience you know what it feels like yep and uh that it should be seen more as a blessing than than something sad right yep and so we uh I performed that at a house concert um on Sunday night yeah and uh yeah some people were crying uh, <laughs> like, I think everyone knows everything. Did you precurse it and say this is what this song is about? A little or was bit. It, yeah, I did. Oh I did. man. Yeah. So it's just <laughs> everybody you know. that audience that's, that's gone through a loss like that or a breakup like that is applying it to them and yeah. their experience. And oh wow, totally right. So, <laughs> but that's that communal experience. That's why we're. That's that's why we do this show. Like that's what uh, that's what that's what he changed it is all about. It's the yeah. idea that 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 guys specifically, but I mean she changed it's coming. We changed. It's all it's all it's all coming. But the idea with he, which is which is, uh, you know, the tip of the spear of this whole thing is that it's a place where guys can go and 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 um, Candy and her team, they talk about the 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 the, the take something that you need, leave something that, you know, yeah. And that's exactly what you're talking about right there. It's, yeah, it's that communal it experience where you're where you're literally trading back and forth mm-hmm. while they're not all identical things. They are relatable things. And, and we can get through life a heck of a lot better if we don't just isolate ourselves and we can relate. Um, Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And, and, um, and music does I that. hate to you know, single out guys, but I no. mean, if anything, it's like, I think men in general have a hard time expressing that. And so I think that's why this podcast has been so popular. It's like, it's gives, gives men a platform to be able to feel like it's okay. Yeah. You can talk about stuff, you know? Uh, I might not have been okay to talk about some of the things I, I did um, in this interview, in this podcast um, five years ago, yeah. you know, so it's getting better. Yeah. You know? Like the, 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 the stigma is going away. Yes. Well, and that's, that's, that's uh, if there's number one, if there's one thing that the team wants to help get rid of or help do uh, is get rid of that stigma. Yes. Uh, because there are so many guys and, and I mean, I want to get into that with talking about creativity in a second here, but there's so many Can't guys wait. right now that, 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 that are living these quiet lives of desperation because they're, they missed, they missed something along the way and, and they're not, they don't feel good about even asking that question. They don't know what it is that they missed. Uh, it's a purpose thing. Uh, there's so many guys out there that are in middle age right now. They don't know what their purpose is. They're flailing a little bit. Um, creatives are ones that in particular, I, my heart goes out to, um, because, you know, we live in a society right now where, I mean, okay, you could maybe go out and be a graphic artist for a, well, I was going to say a newspaper, a newspaper, look how old I am. You can maybe go be a graphic artist for a website or something like yeah. that, or digital. If you're an artist, that kind of a thing, there are ways that you can, you can do things, but, but you've taken the hard road. Like you have taken the hard road when it comes to, you know, wanting to take who you are and get it out there. Um, but that being said, you're also a guy that lives a pretty authentic life. You're doing what you want to do and you're grinding out every single day so you can do what you feel that you were meant to do. Like you have this thing in you and it's it's got outlets like crazy. Thank goodness. Yeah. So many guys out there don't have that. And, and, and it, part of it is because I just think that our, in our society, we don't encourage creativity so much. And, uh, and I, I'm certain I, I you're, agree. I'm certain you're aware of that. Yeah, I'm certain totally, you're aware, totally like you're so grateful. That. You're so grateful. Yeah, I can, you know, it just pours out of you. Um, but there's a lot of guys out there who, who don't have the opportunity to, or don't feel like they have the opportunity to do that. And then they don't talk about it. And I think it's just that whole masculinity thing too. Cause I think, um, being artistic is, um, something that goes against natural masculinity, right? It's yep. more of a feminine yep. side of you, yep. right? And uh, and that I think that's probably why they don't um, aren't open to sharing their their creativity as much as others. And uh, but the ones that do, you know, I think uh, are are usually like the more free spirited people. Um, I don't know if anyone follows. I'm not really big at astrologist, but people keep telling me when they know I'm when they find out. Uh, you know, like, where, where, when's your birthday? Yeah, yeah. And I tell them December 3rd. They're like, oh, 
makes so much sense. <laughs> <laughs> You're Sagittarius. No wonder. Just seeing you up there, they're like, and then I had said them someone tell me that a lot of like famous singers and famous artists were Sagittarius. Yep. And um, some of the most famous people in the world, apparently. Yeah. Like Oprah and stuff like that. So the real extroverts, the yeah, real, yeah, really the real peacocks re- of the world. Really outgoing, creative yeah. people. Yep. And um, I just feel like that's always been who I am. But at the same time, it's it's not always been easy to share my creativity because it's, it's like soul bearing stuff. Yeah. And it, it can be pretty, especially if you... Um, I think the big worry of sharing is is someone hearing it and not liking it. Rejection. Yeah, the rejection. Yep. Right. So you don't want you don't want that feeling. So you don't better just not show anybody, uh, or or you're only showing certain people, but not the rest yeah. of the world. You know, it's okay for your couple of your friends to hear it, but you know, maybe you don't want everyone else to hear it. And uh, I used to be like that to some degree, and I think you just get over it. Um, I, I got over it. No, the best way to, was to just um, start becoming more confident in my creativity. Once I started fe- feeling that my creativity was actually really good. Yeah. And I'm like, I actually really like what I'm hearing right now. Yep. <laughs> you know, I'm like yep. feeling proud of yourself. It's like, I think I just wrote a really good song. Yeah. And you're like, wow. I wrote this, you know, <laughs> and you're like, this is like, I want, I want, I want to shout it off the top of a mountain, you yeah. know, like I want it to be on the radio. I want everyone to hear it. I think it's going to affect people in a positive way. And, and, and I and think once you start getting those juices flowing, it, it can really um, ignite uh, that passion and, and, and you lose the fear. Yeah. Of, of being worried what people are going to think about it. Well, that's the thing. I think when you jump into it suddenly it doesn't matter what level you're at. I know for me personally, like I could have, like I worshiped music growing up, worshiped it. And like you said, it's the golden age. And I, you and I are very, very similar in the bands that we loved mm-hmm. uh, growing up. And, 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 and I mean, I, I loved it. I wanted to be there, be doing it, be part of it. Didn't know how, wasn't sure how the shoehorned, but the moment I got a guitar in my twenties and I learned eight chords yeah. or whatever, suddenly as I would do that alone, stuff would just start coming out of me. And it didn't matter if I, if I uh, never got to a stage, never got to a karaoke bar, never got to a whatever, but at least scratching that itch helped ignite that and help release some stuff. Um, I was going to ask totally. you about your writing process and I'm, yes. I'm fascinated by it. Like, do you prefer to write alone or do you prefer to collaborate or is it a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B and there's stuff that you have done yourself that has never kind of seen the light of day, but it's just, oh, you get sure stuff is. out. Yeah, there definitely is. It's, it's sometimes, yeah. And that's the, the whole thing about, about creativity is uh, some of it's meant for to be shared. Yeah. Some of it's just meant to stay with you. And, and I, and I think knowing the difference between what that, what that is mm-hmm. for, let's say a song yep. is, could really make things really easy for your life <laughs> yeah. and happy, or could really bother you, <laughs> make things really like a living hell for you. Cause I, I the, 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 how I say that is, is like, so I, I, I see there are two ways of writing songs. Okay. Right? One, like you just said, is a song you write either for yourself yep and there's a song you write for other people to say that's my song that's my favorite that's my song now it's yep. not yours anymore it's someone else's song yeah right you got to be careful that the song a song of yours that is actually meant to be yours isn't one you're trying to make everyone else like because that's when it can get really bad that's when you can get frustrating it's like why does nobody like this oh song? yeah 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 it. yeah uh, and it was because it was on going over everyone's heads no one can relate to it it's just for you yep right where (laughs) so i think recognizing the differences and then and then so for me when i collaborate uh it's always got to be a song that's going to be for someone else because if you go into a collaboration uh with something that you're against changing it yeah right then it, it's not going to bode well for a good collaboration. Right. right. And, and I've seen it happen in writing rooms and things like that. So, yeah. So I always got to make sure my songs that I'm, 
allowing to be free yeah. to be for everybody are the ones that I'm going to either share to the world and or collaborate with. So, and I love the process of, of both. I love writing alone. Uh, I love writing with my bandmates and I just love with writing with different artists yeah. of completely different styles. And, uh, I just I just get off on 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 the creative process now. I think writing used to be literally the worst thing I was at. I was not I really was not good at writing. No, no, and it, and I was self conscious about it. Um, right. I think you know, even in my old band, I felt really sub uh, self conscious about it. I felt like every idea I was bringing to the table, it would get shot down. Yeah, and you feel like I suck. I suck. All my ideas suck. Yep. I'm not good at this. Yeah. I'm just going to stick to playing bass and jumping around and, and getting the crowd hype. Cause that's all I'm good for, you know? There's, and, a, there's a Dave Grohl quote about that. <laughs> <laughs> the best way for a drummer to get kicked out of a band. Hey guys, I got a new idea for a song. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, but then, then you start doing things on your own. Right. Yeah. And, and, and you are building that confidence and, I started taking, we were talking about workshops earlier. Um, the thing that changed my creative process, turned it on his head. Yep. was meeting uh, Ralph Murphy. He's like, he was my songwriting mentor, my guru. And uh, rest in peace, Ralph. He, we lost him in 2021. And he's like, uh, he's written like a number one hit in every decade since the 60s. What, that, what, let's give Ralph some love. And, what, and, are, what are what are we that, talking about and here? And that counts like the last in the two thousand twenties. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, like, what are some Taylor of his songs? Swift, okay, Brooks, okay. There we go. Yep. Um, everybody. Wow. Right? He's been co-writing on it, co-wrote on on everything. So he he kind of knows what he's talking. Yeah. About. He's yeah, the one yeah. that told me the difference between the two types of songs, and you got to be careful. The one for yourself, the one for everybody else. Yeah. That you're just. And I, I'm like that I makes love that. so much sense. Yeah. Because you know, I've been ba- in bands with with people that uh, feel like it's, it's a song for themselves should be a song that should be a single. And you're just like, mm, no one's going to like this one. Yeah. And then sure enough, they don't. And then, yeah, feelings get hurt. And, you know. Because it's so darn personal. It's so personal. <laughs> it's, yeah. Or it's a, it's a song that's so personal that any, t- um, you hear it a, a way it could be better. Yep. And, and that gets shut down. You're like, no. Nope. Course isn't changing. Oh, Don't yeah, touch yeah, any yeah, words. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, well, it could be a better song if you yeah. did. But uh, so, <laughs> meaning Ralph really, really, really got that. And I met him, I think, in about 2011. Yep. And right when I started the studies. So it, it was from that point on, it was just like every time I write a song, it's like, hey, what, what would Ralph do? That's the first thing I think of. Like, mm-hmm. what would he do to my song? Because he, um, I was a performance coach at a music conference and he was a songwriting coach and um, he just did his seminar and I was blown away <laughs> and, uh, and I kept wanted to pull him aside and, you know, get him for myself yeah. to help me out. Yep. Right. So, so when we're sitting at a bar cause we were catching a flight home and I'm like, Hey man, you think you could take a look at my songs? And, and, and I'm or like, I'm like, what do you think of my songs that I performed? Uh, at the because uh, at, at the, the conference, conference there, actually yeah. they we, are us as mentors had to put our money where our mouth was mouths were and actually get up and perform our fantastic songs as well yeah just to show how it's done in a way right but then you get a little nervous you're like oh boy it's better be good so I thought I did a really good job uh, with a couple of originals I had at the time and uh, Ralph was like you performed them so well like um, everyone was engaged and he's like you are. A you've born, got that you're a, part. You're a born performer. Yep. He's like, your songs will never be played on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he's like, ha, I'm like, oh, wow. And he's like, have they ever? I'm like, not yet. Not no. my own songs no. yet. And he's like, well, do you want to know why? I'm like, and I'm like, okay. He's like, okay. Get puts a napkin down, gives me a pen, and he's like, write out the lyrics for both both songs you played. And I did. And he took his red pen and he was like, like it's school teacher. He was like, you need this, you're, you weren't describing what this was. And like, wow. what does this mean? What are you even trying to say here? And, he's, and I'm just, just a like, master. I'm like, oh my God, you're right. 
you know, in you seconds just, can break like, down ne- a song yeah, like and never just, leave things oh, up my goodness. to the listener to just try to figure out on their own. Some things, yeah, but for the most part, it's like, you know, you really want to want, want them to know what this song's about, don't you? And uh, he said, like, he'd always say something like, your your songs are great for ten o'clock at night, but they're not they're not right for seven a.m. Seven a.m. is when people are focused on your lyrics and the story. 10 o'clock at night, people have had some drinks. They're there for the vibe and the energy. Yeah. And makes it, he's like, that's what you, that's when you, you thrive. He's like, now you got to be able to figure out how to do it at 7 a.m. Yeah. And I was just like, oh God, mind blowing right now. <laughs> how do I do this? So it's, I'm still working on it, but that's been my, my life's goal since then is to figure out how to write songs that are going to hit people here and make them feel like I love that song. This is my song. Let's go back to Let Go for a second. So uh, I assume that one started out as a for for Earl song. <laughs> I assume that one started out as a as a, as a, as a as a song. But if you're if you yes. if you have that mentality though, mm-hmm. you're still trying to make it relatable. And then at some point, you're like, okay, it is relatable, and you kind of introduce other people to it. Do I have that right? Is that it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I, w- I definitely wanted it to be a song. I knew it was personal, so I was like, Ugh, do it. Is it going to be something? How am I going to react if someone wants to edit it? Yeah, you know. Yeah, there you go. And change things. Yeah. And um, luckily, no one did. Yeah. You know. Um, it was, if anything, it was just more musically, not so much lyrically. Yeah. And I think that's when I started to realize I was on the right track with this song. Uh, I, th- I think um, even Ralph would have would have approved of it of it lyrically. Aww. And um, and then yeah, you know, it's just it's just one of those things where it's just it, when it's something that relatable, you know, sometimes people need to hear it, you know. And I just felt like I can't I can't keep this to myself. It has to be for everybody. And uh, that's the other question. Um, you know, you throw a song out there, you know, that's your song about your breakup, uh, which was a very personal thing for you. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a very specific song. It's about a breakup and and you kind of precurse it when you played it live the other day, that sort of thing. Um, are you OK when people make that their song then? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I want it to be I want it to be someone else's favorite song. You like like that's the one I lean on when I think about whatever it was. And I mean, that's hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, isn't it amazing about music? How, and I mean, I, I, you and I could probably go down a very deep rabbit hole talking about what certain songs mean to us in certain places, certain moods, certain we think about certain events, that kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, isn't that the wonderful thing about music and how uh, the fact that you get to do that for people, uh, that that's gotta be a, a pretty crazy cool feeling. It's so cool. It's, it's such a, it's such a blessing. You know, I, uh, I feel like, so fortunate to not only do I get to do that, that I've been able to do it this long Mm -hmm. and, um, and hopefully, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm still improving, Yeah, you know, which is the cool, coolest part about music. I think that's why I chose it in the first place. You do something like that. By the time you're my age, you're, you've been retired for years. Yep. You're just, you're going to get worse at it. Yep. And then music's the opposite. By the time you're my age, it's like you you could be getting towards your masters. Yeah, you're more learned. You're <laughs> music, better at it. You know, it. Yeah. right? So I feel like songwriting was the thing I wanted to turn into my was my weakness. Yeah. Uh, and Michael Jordan said it best. You know, it's, that's when he became Michael Jordan was when he turned those weaknesses into his strengths yeah. in his game. And I felt like I feel like songwriting was a weakness, and I'm, I'm, I've been turning into a strength. And I feel like it is now. I, f- I feel so confident. In it. I can be in a. I feel like I could be in a room with any writer, even of levels above me, and I'd be able to hold my own. Mm-hmm. Or I could at least sit down and write a song, um, either on my own or with anybody in in one sitting. Mm-hmm. I'll come out of it with something pretty good. Um. I, I, I want to be very careful how I ask this question. Um, and maybe, hey, you know what? Maybe this might be one of the things that gets edited out, but I'm fascinated sure. to know your perspective on this. Okay. It's a little bit deep. It's, it's, it's a little Good. bit, it's a little bit, uh, that's what this is all about. It's a little about, bit man. spicy. Um, but I, I, I just, spicy. I just know that your perspective on this, uh, and if it's just for me and I get to hear it, then great. Okay. Uh, you and I are both Gen Xers. Um, we both, uh, have, have, have seen, uh, 
uh, our lives through the lens of the times that we lived in mm -hmm. uh, then and now. And we also see generations past us. You're playing for them. Many of the generations you play for are, you know, half our age kind of a thing. You're yep. playing for, for Gen Zers and, and, and uh, a lot of opinions out there, a lot of things that, um, you know, concepts that have been introduced by this generation to all generations for everybody. One of them being privilege. Uh, the other one being uh, cultural appropriation and, and things like that. I'm super curious because I mean, grow, when you're in wide mouth, mm -hmm. you know, going through some of these, uh, for lack of a better term, these, well, I'm not even going to use that word. These, these small town bars <laughs> um, and yeah. some of these people that you saw, mm -hmm. like KKK people, like, like, like you, mm -hmm. and you alluded to it earlier, racism mm -hmm. and things like that. Yep. Um, our generation grew up seeing a lot of that stuff and, and we've seen a lot of it refined. Thank goodness. Uh, but now we live in this time where there's a lot of people looking at the not so distant past through today's lenses and they're yeah. throwing judgments and things out there. Uh, you're a Filipino guy that was in a, in a, in a, in a blues band, uh, for lack mm -hmm. of a better term. Now you're a Filipino guy in a reggae band. Has anybody ever said anything to you about, Oh, cultural appropriation or any of that sort of stuff? Has that ever been a thing where people have, have, have not given you static for it, but asked you about it? No, man. Jamaicans love me, man. <laughs> 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 it's the greatest feeling ever. It's the greatest feeling ever when I and I get some like you know either a Rasta or a, you know someone someone from the islands hearing our band and and they come right up to me and they're like, "You do you do us proud." Oh, you know say, say stuff like that, and I'm like, "Because I'm, so I'm from the islands myself." You know, yeah, the, well that's just you it. know, Filipinos are basically the black people of Asia. <laughs> They are, you know, the uh, basketball is our national sport. <laughs> All the music they listen to is R and B. Yep, abs. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> and funk. Yep, right, and and reggae. So it's it's it's. I, I joke, but you sure, know, it's. I I think um, yeah, you got to be definitely more aware. Like you got to be more aware of it and a little bit more careful too, like of how you what you say and how you present yourself and, yeah. and things like that. Even though I am a person of color, it, it's still uh, touchy because I'm also a Gen Xer too. Yeah. And, you know, things that used to be normal for us to say, which we didn't mean anything by, yep. all of a sudden you could get canceled for it in Absolutely. like a split second. So, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, I, I think, I think music is music yeah. and, uh, that's another part of the reason why I gravitated towards it. it. One thing that hasn't changed about it is that it it just crosses every single barrier, it does. no matter. It's the ultimate melting pot, as far as I'm it, concerned. It too. is, and, yep. and and for as far as I go, I like my goals for our music, my music, and our band's music, um, to be the type of music that that actually does where there's no bar there's no <sighs> there's no barriers right because if, if you come to a show yep especially a festival or something like that there's people that are dancing in the crowd of, of any age they're either a little kid yep or someone in the 70s yep and everything in between yeah they're of every color and they're of every gender yeah um everyone feels welcome at a steady show and yep. that's that's what that's what i want i always want that to be the case and um, actually there's another brand new song too, that isn't out yet. I call it, it's called the fifth dimension. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know if you're into that whole thing, but if anyone knows what I'm talking about, it's, uh, you know, it's like the age of Aquarius th yeah. thing, right? Yep. It's like, a, a and, and how we are heading there, you know, not to get super deep or cosmic on anybody. Like I'm not that cosmic of a person, Yeah, but I do believe in that. I do believe uh, that the the pandemic has shifted uh, everybody in a way. Where you're either going to go one way or the other. You're yeah. going to stay in your two D, three D, or you're you're going to head to five. And and the people on the five, what we mean by that are the people that are open to everything. Yeah. And they're now all those closed minded things are now gone. Yeah. And now and when that happens, you can achieve your fullest potential too. Yes. Right. As a person individually, and then. And us as a human, as a human race, not to get too like, you know, woke about it or anything like. Because I'm not a very super woke person, yeah. either, But I understand, and uh, there's still things that 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 I do get, um, and that is definitely one of them. And and one of the lines of of that song is, um, I want to see 
what the world could be if we all stand up and embrace every gender, every race, because in the end, we're all the same. Yes. So uh, that's right. That's music is the great equalizer. Yeah. We'll say a lot. Love is the way, right? <laughs> Things like that. And, and it is love, is, love and music yeah. go hand in hand. And that's, that's what's going to make the world go around. That's how we're going to, that's how the world's going to advance for sure. Absolutely. Um, Oh, I love that so much. And again, I'm, I'm always such a fan of the idea that, um, that, 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 you know, the things that we are together on far outnumber the things that separate us. And if we just focused on that a little bit, yeah. uh, music is a way of doing that music. It just simply is. It's a way it's of doing way. that. It can, yeah, well, yeah. Um, you don't even have to speak English nope. to feel it. No. Nope. Right. It's, it, it just, like we said, it, crosses every possible barrier yeah so um i can't thank you enough for doing this we gotta i, I the time goes so fast yeah, when, when we a do good these way, things here great way to i think so it, too you know? i mean i i could not agree more um i could not endorse your music more um and 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 the feelings that it exudes and it brings out of people and stuff and i think that i think it's really cool that you know the idea that you touched on a couple of uh, a couple of the, these songs that um it's not that reggae music doesn't talk about some of these things. It's the way that it delivers them, you know, let go. I'm sure it comes across. I haven't heard it yet, but I'm sure it comes across in a very upbeat, happy sort of, sort of a, a way. Yeah. It's um, more of just a pop rock yep, song. Right? Yep. There isn't really much reggae in it or funk or anything like that. It's just, you know, it's one of those ones that are just kind of its own thing. Oh yeah. Uh, will it come out on uh, the next, uh, the next LP that you guys decide to release or are you? Are yes. You uns- okay. Yeah. Yeah, it is definitely. Yeah. Then the, the next record uh, is going to be, is that that's going to be on it and some stuff that we're just still even writing now is on it. Stuff that we released a year ago that uh, the rest of the world really didn't hear. Yep. Only our, only our small fan base of, of hardcores have really heard it. So it's still going to be new to everybody else. So that's all going to be on one album. And I still love albums, man. Yeah. It's all about records. You know, you can release as many singles to the cows come home, but if you don't put out a record, you're not really an artist in my opinion. That's just my opinion. But no, 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 no. I feel the same I'm way. I'm old There's, school. I'm old school too. When mm-hmm. it comes to that stuff, there's, uh, there's something to taking a long play, um, and sitting back and like, like we talked about before we hit the, you know, uh, not having the phone out, having that down and just sitting back there and just immersing yourself in, in, in a piece of music, maybe even while you do something creative. Um, Absolutely. it's such a, such a lovely, lovely thing. Um, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking time to come and, and visit us. Thank you so much for embracing um, he changed it and what it is that we're trying to do. I, I can't thank you enough for this, Earl. No, it's an um, honor to be here and oh. talk about this and get to share all these, you know, important things that, you know, that can, people are very interesting to me. And yeah. I think interesting to most people that are going to be wanting to watch this show, right? It's like, you're going to watch it for a reason. Yeah. It's going to, it's every episode that you do touches upon something different, but yet it all ties in together. <laughs> Um, it's a bigger tapestry and there's no question about that. And after I forget how many episodes we're at now, 150, whatever it is, um, you can see the bigger picture forming, you know, with every single one that we do. Um, you are a big part of that. I can't thank you enough for this. Earl, thank you, sir. I appreciate this. Um, Thanks, that's y'all. why we, that's why we do the show. Thanks, yeah. Team. I mean, yeah, everybody. Yeah. Um, Got that's an amazing a, team too. Absolutely. Wow. Well, thank you for that. And I mean, it's all, it's all candy and, and her crew. Uh, that's why we do the show here for conversations just like that. I hope that uh, I hope that not only was there some entertaining entertainment uh, value to this, but also uh, some insight. And maybe we can all start thinking about uh, ourselves. We can think about people that are around us and ways that we can all help each other be better. Um, if you haven't downloaded the He Changed It app yet, what the heck are you waiting for? It's in the app store already. Get it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know how um, to do that, folks. Everyone knows how to get apps. <laughs> <laughs> he changed it.com for all the info yeah. that has been another episode of he cast the official podcast of he changed it my name is mike chisholm go change something